You know, ladies, as Americans, we love our freedom. We will fight for our freedom. But if you look under the surface, you'll find that we're not so free. In reality, we are a slave to those things that bind us. Have you ever even thought of yourself as a slave? That really kind of goes against the grain because we think we're slaves to no one. By gosh, we're Americans, we're free. Well, if we're so free, why are we bound up in sin? God's word tells us in Romans chapter six through eight that we are either a slave to sin or a slave to God through Christ Jesus. So how do we gain freedom from these sins that bind us? I want to say right off that this is not a message to condemn you. This is a message of freedom from your sin. I know many of you want to do God's work, but before he can really use us, he wants us to be cleansed of that sin that's holding us back from what he has for us. And what is so great is when I read Romans 6.11, it talks about Count yourself dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. And that's exactly how I felt. I was dead to that sin. And so, do you believe that you're dead to sin? I don't think we necessarily do. Because what I hear is people are always saying, I'm a sinner saved by grace. And yes, you were a sinner. You were a sinner saved by grace. But... Once you become a believer, you are no longer considered a sinner in God's eyes. You're a saint. And I remember when I first learned about or read that I was a saint, because to me, the saints were all those holy people, you know, Saint Andrew or whoever all those other saints are. I wasn't a saint, but the word says that I am. You are, as believers, you are a saint in God's eyes. So that washing of the word is going to help renew your mind. And, you know, your mind is like a, a filter. And when you read God's word or whatever, whatever you've read, that's what gets into your mind and into your heart. And so when you, whatever you've thought of, whatever you've listened to in the past, has gotten into your mind and into your heart if you've let it in. But we've got to have this little filter that's built and based on the Word of God. And when we hear things, we've got to measure it according to God's Word. We've got to filter and let those things that are God's Word come in. But if it's a lie, if we know it doesn't line up with God's Word, then we've got to take those thoughts and cast them down. We don't want to let those in. And that's how we renew our mind and our heart. Whatever we get into our mind, it's going to get into our heart, and we know that what's in our heart is going to come out. Mm -hmm. And so we've really got to stay in the Word to keep renewing our mind. Being a slave to Christ is to totally surrender your life to Him. To live a victorious life is to yield yourself to God, all parts of yourself. Give Him your mind, your eyes, your mouth, your ears, your heart, your hands, your feet. From the top of your head to the tip of your toes and everything in between. Give them your work. Give them your past that you're holding on to. Give them your husband. Give them your children. And I'm sure you'd like to give them your husband and children, right? <laughs> but we know that we can just follow God and what he has us, wants us to do as far as how we deal with our husband and how we deal with our children in our workplace. But we've got to surrender that to him. Now, in some cases, surrender, we, when we have these bondages, it, we, sometimes we have bondages and sometimes we're holding on to things. And I think there are some of you that are holding on to things that God has been talking about, talking to you to let go. And what you've got to do is open your hands. When you open your hands, then you can receive those things that are better. God wants to give you better things, but if you're holding on, you can't receive them. So open your hands and let go. There is freedom in completely surrendering your life to God. Let God make the decisions and you follow. God is waking up your spirits, and He's calling you to a closer walk with Him. He wants you to surrender to Him, to be a slave to Him in obedience. A few weeks ago, Cindy and Vanessa and I were praying, 
And I really felt like God wanted me to surrender something to him. And so I was praying, you know, God, what, in all sincerity, God, what one thing do you want me to surrender? And the next day he answered me. I was listening to a sermon on surrender. It just happened to be. And he told me that, he said, I want all of you. I don't want just one thing. I want all of you. And that's the message that he has for y'all tonight. He wants all of you. Not even just this one sin that you're having a problem with, but all of you. 